Howdy, roofers, and welcome to the Roofer Growth Hacks podcast. It's the podcast that's dedicated to highlighting those in the roofing industry, learning how they overcome their growth challenges with creative growth hacks and connect them with others in the industry. I'm your host, Chris Hunter, founder and chief marketing officer of RoofingSites.com. I'm also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. Got a little story for you. Fred Rakowski with Legacy Business Leaders is a former remodeling company owner of 33 years. Fred built his business, sold it, and then became a business coach. In this episode, Fred shares his wisdom and guidance of his five functions framework, as well as other golden nuggets of wisdom. So be sure to listen up as Fred shares some awesome growth hacks. Well, roofers, we have got a very excellent guest here for Roofer Growth Hacks today. Thank you so much for coming on, Fred. Great to be here, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and kick this off with our first question. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Fred, and and, uh, your entrepreneurial journey. Where did it start? Where are you now with it? Sure thing. My entrepreneurial journey started probably when I was like 13, mowing grass and uh, doing jobs like that. But Me too. <laughs> I, went, I went into the, uh, the building industry uh, simply because my family was in it. And I started a framing contractor as a framing contractor. And then I transitioned over into building new homes from there. And then we made a big move into strictly design, build, remodeling as a remodeler for about the next 20 or so years. So I was in business in the construction industry for about 33 years before I finally sold it and transitioned into some nonprofit work. Awesome. So what do you do now? How, How do you, what do you do? I went into the nonprofit world for about six years. But during my building career, I had done a lot of training and teaching in certification programs uh, in NARI to be specific and loved doing that. And I learned a ton doing that. And in my nonprofit world, I met with some people who had been in the business coaching industry, and that really intrigued me. So about 12 years ago, I transitioned out of nonprofit, and I've been doing strictly business coaching since then with all types of businesses, including the trades, uh, the construction trades and builders and remodelers. Of course, I speak their language, so it's a natural for me, but that's what I do now full time and have been doing for the last 12 years. Awesome. Awesome. So you say coaching, but w- what exactly do you help your your customers with? Yeah, that's a great question. Now, coaching is really a process of accountability, building strong relationships with business owners, and helping them to become more aware of uh, the environment they really live in. Most of us come into this industry with our tool belt on, and that's important. I think it goes without saying having competence, technical competence and expertise in our industry is huge. But I think it also goes without saying that running a business is a whole nother level of competence that most of us really struggle with. So myself included, by the way, especially in the early going, That's what I do now, help business owners become more aware of what it really takes to put the pieces all together, the five functions I call them, and really take a business and direct it profitably into the future. Okay. Awesome. Just out of curiosity, what are those five functions? Would you, you know, is is that okay to share here? Absolutely. Uh, The first one is purpose, really establishing a strong purpose, a vision, uh, some kind of a, a purposeful driver that you and your people can rally around and align with. Uh, The second one is the idea of leadership. Uh, That's huge in and of itself. It is a skill, a learned skill, a discipline, in fact, that really most of us just don't know what we don't know about. Uh, The third one is finances. That stands right in the center. That is understanding and owning your finances, being very, very competent and clear about how you're going to make a profit by the numbers. The next one is organization. That is the idea that we structure, we build an infrastructure, so to speak, that will withstand the weight of conflict and stress over time and allow us to really move to the future. And then the final one is people. And you might think, well, well, doesn't people come first? Well, the answer is absolutely no, uh, until you really get some kind of a substantial substructure in place, then and only then can you really put the right people in the right seats to ensure that you can let go and become more and more uh, 
functional, uh, autonomous, so to speak, over time and grow your business into the future. So that's the five functions. Absolutely love that. Is that is this a framework that you built or was this something that you were taught? It's a framework that really t- came to me intuitively over the years, and I put it together in an illustration. It's so, so key to success. And when you think about the five functions, it's important to understand that they don't function independently. They function interdependently. And one one attached to the other. And if one of them is out of sync or weak or compromised, you compromise the whole system. And that's really the the essence of building a business, getting these five functions, A, much more uh, functional in your business, and then helping them make sure that they're all working interdependently every single day. Love that. So I want to dig into some of these here. So uh, leadership specifically, how do you develop that leadership? You said it, it's a learned, it can can be learned, right? Obviously, there are some born quote unquote leaders, you know, out there, but how do you learn leadership? It's a great question. And, and it's one of the most important questions in terms of successfully running a business. And the idea of learned leadership is it's a discipline, it's a skill. It's like anything else. If you want to get good at it, you got to understand how to do it. And then you have to understand how to put those pieces into play every day. Leadership is the idea of creating environments. Most of us tend to think of leadership automatically as uh, in terms of titles or positions, and that's not leadership at all. It's basically the idea that um, we become more and more skilled at developing the people around us and protecting the profit of the organization by creating environments where people are aligned around what I mentioned earlier, that first of the five functions, which is purpose. So once you understand how to establish those parameters, then you can begin to learn and practice the skill of leadership, which is developing people around you who are aligned around those principles and practices. And then you become an organization rather than just having a job. It's a big difference. Love it. And finances. Let's talk about that. What? How How does that work? I mean, obviously, we we have to get paid, right? (laughs) We have to, (laughs) and we have to make our services profitable for us, you know, but how do you actually do that? As small business, and we have such a terrible reputation at understanding and owning our finances, we tend to allow that stuff to be uh, delegated, so to speak, to a CPA or accountant or a bookkeeper, or even an office manager, worse yet in most cases. But, you know, we, we open ourselves to so much liability and risk when we do that. And the understanding of the finances is not that big of a deal. But understand it, you must if you're going to run a business. And that means starting with profitability. In fact, really, the simple equation, how do I calculate my markup and margins? And so many of our small business owners and entrepreneurs in our country just don't get it. And there's really not that much to it. But once you do it, you just gain um, immeasurable control of your future and your destiny, believe me. And that is huge. And I, you know, this idea that it's stressful running a small business, sure it is. But we add so much stress onto that plate when we don't understand our numbers and own them. And honestly, just gaining that control can give you so much peace of mind. I know it did for me in the early going when I first brought somebody in to help me because I didn't get it. I thought I did, but like many small business owners and entrepreneurs, I didn't really have a clue. So that's a huge piece, understanding it first in the first place, and then being able and willing and ready to track it in the second place. And that is putting in key performance indicators, a dashboard, so to speak, just like on a plane or a train or a ship, for example, understanding where my destination is financially in this case, and then being able to course correct quickly because I know the KPIs, the key performance indicators that I'm studying every week, month, and quarter in order to say, you know what, we're not hitting the mark, but we're going to make some changes quickly. In that case, those numbers become leading indicators as to po- opposed to what many of us are accustomed to with our CPAs and accountants, which are trailing indicators, which, by the way, are nothing more than history. And history doesn't make the future. Uh, it's being proactive and knowing what those numbers are. And then being able to say, we're making changes right now. We're not going to tolerate underperformance in this case. We're going to make sure that we're on track. So are there specific, you know, leading indicators than KPIs that you typically recommend for contractors? Yeah, that's another great question. And and many contractors, many of our entrepreneurs, especially like in industries like roofing, we're relying on trades, other trades, 1099s to do a lot of the work for us. But 
most all of us have at least one or two key people on the payroll. Uh, there's two, and I say this because there are two types of KPIs. One are individual KPIs where we help people win in our organizations by collaborating on what is that one or two, what are those one or two key performance indicators that we are going to track together to make yeah. sure you're winning, to help you to win at all times, not to find you doing something wrong or losing so that we can punish that behavior. No, the idea is always that a KPI is in place to help you to win because when individuals in our organizations are winning, guess what? The organization's winning. Mm -hmm. The second type are organizational KPIs, mm -hmm. and those usually include 10 to 15 numbers that tell our story. Uh, of course, the simplest ones are cash in the bank, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Those are important to know. Others would be overhead, sales, revenue produced, gross profit produced, of course, the big number, net profit produced. And if you're using, hopefully all the small business owners listening to this are using some kind of financial software, most are using QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. If you're inputting your data correctly and um, uh, in a timely fashion into your accounting software, those numbers are right there for you at your fingertips. Figure out how to pull them out or get some help. It's not difficult. And once you do to be able to populate your KPI dashboard, which is a simple spreadsheet, by the way, just simply putting those numbers in and seeing them really gives you, like I mentioned earlier, that peace of mind to know that there is either we're on track or there's something we need to deal with right now. Interesting. I love that. And yeah, it's it's one of the hardest things to do for me personally. Like I I failed out of accounting, you know, and and my first try in college, you know, at Texas A and M, and that is one thing that I I cannot stand. But I agree with you 100 percent on on keeping those numbers, you know, up front for you to be able to see and track and see where you're going. So yeah, I love that, I, and I love this framework here. It very it reminds me a lot of uh, entrepreneurial operating system. Very similar. Yeah, I mean we we run on EOS and and um, here at RoofingSites.com, and we recommend it to every client. But you know, I I love love this this framework here. Well, just okay, just so by default, really, just by default, Chris, uh, yeah. every a lot. In fact, almost everything I do parallels EOS. Not that I copy yeah. it. I love yeah. it though. I I ever get into it and read about it uh, partway into my. Uh, business coaching career. But yeah, it's absolutely uh, very similar. Love it. Let's talk about the people side, right? Because people, are, that's a huge thing. And that's one thing. And I, I've talked to thousands of roofing company owners. I've talked to hundreds of very successful, successful entrepreneurs that I've, I've interviewed on podcasts. And one of the biggest recurring themes is having the right people, right? So <laughs> how, how do you find the right people, right? How do you identify who's supposed to be in whatever seat in your organization and then get that person and attract? Yeah, it's a great question. And you're right. It's one that almost every single entrepreneur and business owner, regardless of the size of the business, is asking on a continual basis. I deal with it every single day, practically. And honestly, uh, it goes right back to that first of the five functions I mentioned, which is purpose. And that is really structuring your business around something meaningful, you know, something that is uh, is inviting, that's inspirational to other people to say, yeah, I want to join this team. They have a great vision. Their purpose is to go out and do something significant, not just do work and get a paycheck. Uh, when you create that kind of environment, first and foremost, you adhere to it and you make it overt in your business every day. And you might be thinking, well, I'm a small business owner. I've got so much stuff to do. I got to get out there and check on jobs and so forth. But in all honesty, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about 1099s or W-2 employees right now. It's the idea of inspiring the people around us with something that's meaningful. It's one of the biggest drivers of human motivation is having a purpose. So with that in mind, uh, now we can transition over to, okay, so how do I find the right people? Well, you inspire them first and foremost. And you have to, it's so important that as business owners, when we're in the hiring mode, which should be all the time, by the way, in today's world, uh, we cannot just uh, uh, assume that we're going to hire people, quote unquote, when we need them, because usually when we need them, it's too late. Somebody else is already vacated or we've got a huge issue on our hands that we're trying to overcome because somebody is failing. But nonetheless, uh, this whole process is a mindset, right people, right seats, right stuff at the right time. Well, who are the right people? First and foremost, yeah. it's going to be somebody that uh, is aligns with your purpose. That is your core values, what's most meaningful to you and your organization, um, your vision, where you're going, your mission, why you're going there. 
Uh, this isn't flowery platitudes up on the wall. This comes from the heart. It's who you are, what you're doing, and why you're doing it. Figure that out first, because now you can begin to invite and identify the right people to invite onto your team. And that's what you're doing. But most of us, unfortunately, we hire by default. Well, I need somebody now. Yeah. And um, therefore, the first person that comes along and can fog up a mirror and do what I need them to do, they're, they're in. And as we all know, uh, that just is a, an yeah. invitation for failure. And we end up recycling 100%. all the old problems that we've dealt with for years, probably, <laughs> in yeah. most cases. But first two criteria for hiring then become character and attitude, number one and number two, okay. character and attitude. And number three would be competence, as important as it is. But think about this. If you have a bunch of people that are all stars at what they do, but their character is awful and their attitude sucks, mm -hmm. what have you really got at the end of the day other than a bunch of headaches? Yeah, for sure. And I 100% agree with that. I love that character, attitude, and competence. So let me ask, because I have a coach that has, you know, and and by the way, if you're listening to this as a roofing company owner and you don't have a business coach, I highly recommend that you you seek one out, you know, and, and Fred here would be an excellent one for sure. But, you know, I have a coach and we have made tremendous strides, even just even in the past year, by simply him having this simple little thing. He said, keep your next three hires at all times in a sheet that you're constantly looking at. So is do you recommend something like that to your clients? Oh, absolutely. We talk about it all the time. Hiring has to be top of mind. You know, I say it this way, Chris, the, the top two responsibilities of a leader, and this goes for all entrepreneurs and owners of companies, leaders of companies, is number one, profit protection. That's your first and foremost responsibility. You have to be a bulldog. And, and that's why it's so important to understand and own your numbers. Listen, you cannot pro protect profit if you are thinking you're going to delegate your financial responsibilities to a bookkeeper or a CPA. You have to know them. That doesn't mean that you do all the entries and you do all the work on, uh, in the software. No, not necessarily at all. But that's number one. But number two is close, very closely intertwined with number one. In fact, I'm going to say they're inseparable. Number one is profit protection, but number two is people development. Mm -hmm. And when, when you consider that, you might say, well, what do you mean by that? Why is that even important? We just hire people. Well, no, that's not good enough because if you're going to run and grow a business, that means you're developing other leaders around you and you're cascading those leadership principles throughout the whole organization every single day. So why think about hiring all the time? You can't not think about it and succeed over time. In fact, and even as simple as some of your organizations may be, and by the way, don't hear what I'm not saying. Some of you entry-level business owners, that's fine. You've taken a risk. You've jumped in. You've done one of the most noble things you could ever do is start a business. Now, be true to your responsibilities and understand how to grow this thing because that's on you if it fails at this point. But it's so, so important to have an organizational chart, even if it's just very, very simplistic. And by the way, I don't care if you draw it on the back of a piece of shingle paper. It doesn't matter. But get some kind of a roadmap for how you're going to develop people and who those people are going to need to be sooner than later, and then begin to recruit. And it can be as simple as in your daily networking with other people or business owners, but you've got to have your radar up all the time because there's no guarantee that any good person or a great person is going to stay with you for any length of time. Hopefully, the stronger you build the infrastructure of your business, purpose, vision, mission, mm -hmm. values, people are, are, are inspired by that. They'll stay longer for sure, yeah. but there's no guarantees. Love this. Love this. I'm, I, I could talk this stuff all day long. Right? <laughs> okay. So real quick, what advice would you give to new roofing company owners just starting out? The first one is just, just what I said, be very purposeful about how you're structuring your business for future success. It's not a crapshoot and success is never random. Success takes being very purposeful and focused on where you're going and why you're going there and those parameters for getting there. And that's, that's how you develop a business. Two things, you create parameters for success. That has to do with what I just mentioned, along with things like a subcontractor agreement, parameters, job descriptions, parameters, an employee handbook, parameters. And then from there, once everybody understands the rules for success, that's all parameters are. They're not threats. Uh, they're not these uh, overriding, burdensome things we have to deal with. No, it's just saying, 
here's how we succeed here. We know what we can and cannot do and must and must not do. But besides that, then the second thing is creating expectations for everyone. It goes back mm-hmm. to those individual KPIs I mentioned a little bit ago. But when you do that, of course, pardon me, I shouldn't say of course, I don't want to seem presumptuous here. When you do that, it's so important to help him understand, people understand that the expectations we're discussing, we're collaborating on are simply to help you win, make sure you're winning here at this organization, and then uh, to ensure that we all can win here. That's all it is. Parameters and expectations, clarity, clarity along the way. Uh, By the way, that goes not only for uh, your W-2 employees, your 1099s, your vendors. It goes for your end user customers too. Hmm. If you don't set parameters, clear parameters for success and help them understand what the expectations are that go along with that, then probably you failed them and yourself along the way, and you will never get consistently great outcomes, i.e. profit over time, if you do not do that. Yeah. And that's, you know, since we work on the marketing side of things, that's 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 a, a really key thing, I think, you know, setting those expectations, right, on you get that job, you know, most most roofers will will just go on out there the next day or schedule it, whatever, but with no communications hardly at all, right? Oh, I, I see it all the time. Think about it in a roofing company, for example, you know, in a construction company, my advice would be to listen, do a pre-construction meeting with your customer. You have to help them understand. In a roofing company, it can be as simple as a one-page document you hand Mm -hmm. them uh, when you close the deal and say, listen, uh, we're going to have you to initial this because this is how this work will transpire. And these are some of the things that may or may not happen, but we're going to be there for you. Of course, you've got to make that crystal clear too as part of the expectation. Stuff's going to go wrong in all likelihood, but we're going to be there and we're going to make sure that it gets addressed in the most productive way for you. I love that. So let me ask, what are some industry trends that you're seeing, you know, and how should roofing company owners take advantage of those trends? Yeah. One of the trends that I see is for uh, businesses like roofing, siding, windows, doors, and so forth, they become much more commoditized and the uh Function, uh, function of big business. Uh, mm-hmm. You see it on the ads all the time on TV and elsewhere, billboards and so forth. And for smaller entrepreneurs, that can seem intimidating. Uh, it can seem like, wow, you know, these big guys have all the money. They know what to do. But I want to tell you flat out, listen carefully, leaders and entrepreneurs, because for you, it is absolutely very possible for you to stand out in the industry in that little sphere you may have right now of influence, you'll build a brand on that. And that brand can only ever expand on its own. And it will do so organically, but it'll do it one way. And listen carefully to this and write it down. It will be if you pay absolute huge and focused attention to the customer experience. I want to say it again, and I want you to write it down. If you pay attention and focus everything you do on customer experience, if you do that well, you can't help but have major impact, even if your sphere of influence is very small right now, and, for, and especially in the case of maybe just starting a business. But if you do that, one by one by one, you will increase your footprint in the marketplace. This is what Chris and his team do so well, and they help you do, and you will do that. And not only that, but you just watch your bottom line, because if you get your five functions right and you put them all together, listen carefully you're going to be making a phenomenal amount of profit over time in your business. So please do not be intimidated. This is a huge industry trend, a, a, a trend across all of the construction industries right now as well. Wow. Yeah, I, I thousand percent <laughs> agree with that. I mean, we, we talk to roofing companies all day long. And the number one thing, honestly, is that I see is roofers not picking up the phone. That is the number one issue right now that I see with the roofing companies. And that they're just, and this, no matter the amount of coaching that we do on that, of, hey, you've got to pick up the phone. And that's part of that customer experience. If they call you, answer, you know? And I can't tell you how many of y'all, by the way, have your voicemail box completely full. You haven't taken the time to empty it out so people can actually leave you a message. I say it this way, Chris, you you cannot solve complex problems or serve people well with a text message. Forget it. Today's world is, is a trend. That's another trend that, that's become uh, mm-hmm. you know as much of a hindrance as it is a, an asset. But nonetheless, if you want to really deliver great customer service, you're right. Talk to people face-to-face yes. or at very least yes. on the phone. By the way, this is, this is not only an issue for roofers, it's for across our industry. Yeah across the construction industry. It is such a void. And I just don't understand how people can continue to think that we're going to 
solve the same problems by doing the same stuff over and over again. It doesn't right. work. <laughs> right. No, for sure. I 100% agree with that. Let's pause here for a second to uh, listen to a message from our sponsor, RoofingSites.com. Since 2018, RoofingSites.com has helped roofers double their sales by getting their marketing right using the 4R Roofing Marketing System. If you're a roofing company owner wanting to grow your business, be sure to go to RoofingSites.com and sign up for a roofing marketing strategy session with me. And we're going to head into our lightning round. Our lightning round uh, rules are simple. You have one minute or less to answer each question. You ready for this, Fred? Sure thing. Fire away. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So what is your favorite personal hack book or podcast? This is Anything Goes because we are Roofer Growth Hacks. Well, I give you a whole list of books that I could say right now would have a huge impact. But the most important one, in my opinion, that I use frequently in my training and teaching and coaching is The Outward Mindset by the Arbinger Institute. Phenomenal book. They've written several books that are all well worthwhile investing in and reading, but invest in it. The Outward Mindset, and it will have a massive impact on how you do business and how you deliver great customer experience. Love that. Okay. So next question, Fred, what is your favorite business hack book or podcast? Well, my favorite business hack is just the the simple idea of retraining myself to focus. And that means uh, practicing the skill of awareness. And it's so uh, undervalued and misunderstood, but one of the single most simple leadership and business success strategies you could ever adopt. I call it mental contrasting. The idea of we contrast where we're going with where we are now, and we automatically create this thing called creative tension. And that that calls for awareness. So for you leaders, you entrepreneurs and business owners, just creating that tension between where we are and where we're going positively with discretion and compassion uh, you will create a, an, an environment in your business where people are asked now beginning to ask at least the right questions like, what do we need to change? What do we need yes. to, to stop doing? What do we need to start doing? What would our customers say we should start doing, et cetera? So that um, idea of awareness and the mental contrasting, huge, huge tool. Love that. Okay. Next question. What is the best advice that you've ever been given and bonus points for how you actually applied it? Yeah, that was uh, a, a business coach that I hired early on uh, when I I was uh, just out there pounding nails and trying to figure it all out. And uh, a guy walked up to my site and he said, hey, uh, I'm a business coach. And I thought, all right, you're wasting my time. I've got work to do here, right? Long story short, I hired him and he, I worked with him for a year. What a tremendous, tremendous individual. I so value him. But one of the single, singular, uh, most important things he taught me was Fred, the business is not you. The business is not you. And do not allow yourself to be identified as the business. The business is an entity. It's an entity that you get to to control, that you get to drive and and lead into the future, but it's your choice. You figure that out and I'm going to help you, he said. And he did uh, in in tremendous ways. But that was singular, singular, most important advice I think I ever received. Wow. That's, and it's so, spot on. I mean, come on. We, as entrepreneurs, we get so tied up with our businesses and that's our identity uh, versus thinking of it. Okay. This is, you know, this entity, like you said, over here that that we can manipulate and move forward. I love that. So Fred, how can the Roof of Growth Hacks family get in touch with you and how can we support and and encourage you moving forward? Oh, we're, uh, I'm always open to talking to entrepreneurs and business owners. Uh, My, my uh, website is legacy biz, B-I-Z, leaders.com. You can contact me through that. You're welcome to call me uh, and so forth. I'm sure Chris, you'll provide that contact yeah. info to the audience, but uh, always glad to hear from you. Um, questions, concerns, burning issues, whatever the case may be. This is how I support my clients from week to week, day to day, month to month, and uh, so forth. We, you know, typically we're coaching only one time a month, but in between times is where all the problems, the rubber really meets the road and you get to apply these, hopefully these solutions to these complex problems. And when you think about it, that's all business growth really is, yeah. is an, a, a, an organization's ability to solve complex problems. So anyway, I'm open to that all the time. Absolutely love that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Fred, for coming on here and really 
just sharing all your wisdom, you know, over the past 33 years of being in the industry as well as coaching in the industry. We really do appreciate that. Thanks, Chris. Really a great opportunity. So appreciate the time. Well, how about that, Roofers? Was that pretty awesome or what? I know there were some really huge valuable hacks that Fred shared with us. My favorite, honestly, was when he said, you've got to pay close attention to the customer experience. He said, if you'd listen to nothing else on this podcast, listen to that and that alone. If you can make sure, and I 100% agree with this, by the way, if you can make sure that your customer experience is the absolute best, that's going to make you stand out heads and shoulders, or is it head and shoulders? Head and shoulders from absolutely everybody else out there. Okay. That starts with how you answer the phone, how you set appointments. It's, set, it's also how you interact on that appointment. It's how you give their estimates, Okay, how fast you give it, how professional it looks, how professional you look, by the way, and act on site. And then how does it letting them know how it actually is going to proceed from there? So there's a lot of steps, right? And one of my coaches uh, shared this with me a long, long time ago, that you've got to pay very close attention to that interaction from one step to the next logical step. Okay. A lot of us in the industry, we just want to go for the big step, the one thing and just show up, do the job and leave. Right. But the problem is that if you're not paying attention to that customer experience all along the way, things can go wrong. So I a hundred percent agree with that. He shared a lot of really good things that I wrote down. I loved his five functions. Like I said, it really reminds me of entrepreneur's operating system and a lot of those same types of things, you know, purpose and vision, leadership, finances, loved that at section, organization and people. I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you don't have a business coach that you reach out to Fred as soon as possible, just use the, in the show notes here, just look down below for his information or just go to legacybusinessleaders.com to connect with him. Right. And while you're out there, make sure that you connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook or pretty much wherever that I'm at. Right. Go to roofingsites.com there. And while you're there, you can listen to other previous episodes. I want to give a huge shout out to my company, roofingsites.com. Since 2018, roofingsites.com has helped roofers double their business by getting their marketing right using my system, the 4R Roofing Marketing System. If you're a roofing company owner wanting to grow your business, be sure to go to roofingsites.com and sign up with a roofing marketing strategy with, well, with me. Also, this past year, I published my book, The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. If you're a roofing company owner and you don't have this book in your hand, I'll send it to you for free. Just go to go.roofingsites.com and I'll send you a free copy of my book. Well, roofers, join me next time when we connect with another great roofing entrepreneur and learn how they hack their growth. Until then, I'm Chris Hunter. Thanks and gig em.